Ladies, gentlemen, a while ago I recorded a video showing the different bits and pieces of a small angle scattering machine. Uh, now I thought it might be interesting uh, for you to see the bits and pieces of an ultra small angle scattering machine. The uh, first thing you will notice is that the ultra small angle scattering machine standing behind me here is a lot shorter than the normal uh, small angle scattering machine and that's because it works on a completely different principle. Let me show you how it works. So this instrument is a little bit different than the instrument that I showed before. Uh, one of the bigger differences is that it has a new source. Uh, this is a microfocus source, whereas the one on the small angle scattering machine is a rotating anode source. So this one is a lot more compact, a lot more low power. Uh, the flux is also slightly lower, but, uh, but it's actually really good. Um, Attached to the X-ray source, we have uh, parallelization and monochromatization optics, uh, just like the other machine. After this, we have a secondary shutter and an attenuation wheel, so I can uh, close or attenuate the X-rays however much I'd like. Uh, we then have a very short collimation section over here, and the purpose of this collimation section isn't really to, to adapt the shape of the beam, uh, it's mostly to cut away the radiation that we really, really don't need anyway. So after the first collimation section, uh, we have our first channel cut crystal, which sits right over here on top of a rotation. This crystal uh, acts as an angle filter, so this crystal will pass through only the X-rays which are coming in at one particular direction and rejects all the other uh, radiation. And it does this with a very narrow angular filter uh, filtering step, so in effect this is a very very good collimation system. Much more than you would actually need for a traditional small angle scattering instrument. After this crystal, we have our sample gantry. So this is nothing more than just a holder for samples. So we can mount samples on plates like this. Uh, and then we can stick them in the beam. So the radiation collimated by the first channel cut crystal will then pass through the sample and create a small angle and ultra small angle scattering. Uh, we can analyze the ultra-small angle scattering pattern using a second one of these channel cut crystals uh, which again acts like an angle filter so with this crystal we can look at one, sc one scattering angle at a time uh, so by very accurately rotating this crystal uh, we can stepwise analyze the small angle and ultra-small angle scattering pattern of our sample after this crystal, since we don't need any position res resolution, uh, we have a simple scintillation type counting tube, uh, which counts photons uh, in a very straightforward manner. Unfortunately, this, in, uh, this detector turns out not to be uh, good enough for the purpose that I had in mind, so I will replace it soon with another detector and hopefully that will give us uh, a better signal to noise ratio. This detector and the next detector will be connected to some detector electronics which sits over here. So here we have uh, old style uh, NIM type uh, detector electronics where all of the detector uh, electronics features are uh, separated in different modules. I very highly recommend this type of approach uh, when you want to learn about X-ray detection because it allows you at any point to adjust your, uh, your detector settings and to find out exactly what each step is doing. Besides the detector electronics, we have uh, a little bit more electronics over here. Uh, this is used to uh, control the instrument, so we have a motor controller over here, uh, we have some power supplies, we have some solid state relays, uh, some temperature readouts, um, and a lot of wires to connect up all the motors uh, to the various bits and pieces. So that's the entire instrument. Uh, I hope it was a little bit uh, instructive and if you have any questions please feel free to ask.